You know, to hijack, a, to hijack an event like this that other people put time and effort into and to use the, their, their civility of the crowd and the civility of the organizers as an excuse to blatantly yell out your ill-informed opinions is no way to conduct a civil dialogue. It's absolutely appalling. The people who do that should be embarrassed. <laughs> I, I guess I would also say that as students and as faculty members, you shouldn't put up with it. There's no way that you should allow people who are doing this to hijack your educational opportunities and to bend and twist the, the, the functions and the structures of the university. It's, it's not a good thing, not in any way at all. I would say that was a very disgraceful display, fundamentally. So. Yeah, well, kindness is the excuse that social justice warriors use when they want to exercise control over what other people think and say. So, you know, if we're bandying back and forth uh, our, our differences in values, you know, um, I, I would say that the highest possible value is truth and that uh, one of the concomitants is that is that is that we need stringent protection for freedom of speech so that we can utter the truths that we see fit. And I think that that's a, a value that's much higher than, than kindness, for example. I mean, there's lots of situations in life where, where kindness in the immediate present is not the appropriate way to, to react at all. But so, for example, well, um, when you discipline children, you often hurt their feelings in the short term so that they can learn to behave properly um, in the medium to long term so that their lives go well. And so this automatic assumption that the people on the social justice warrior side of the equation are motivated only by kindness when they're also clearly motivated by power is something I find completely untenable. And I don't think that Pete's solution to program my cell phone so that I can remember what names people need to be called is a reasonable solution at all. We're, we're actually supposed to now use electronic devices to bolster our ability to speak freely How in case we names, offend Jordan? someone. What would you say Trump's IQ really is? Does 160 seem reasonable? No. This will be quoted in... No, 160 is really, really high. Yeah. Um, hmm. I mean, the typical... The, the smart person that you're likely to meet in your life has an IQ of around 145. Yeah. 160 is getting pretty damn rare. And Trump's old. And IQ goes down with age, fluid IQ, although crystallized IQ either stays the same or goes up slightly. So he isn't the problem solver or the learner that he was when he was 20. No one, no one is. If you're in good physical shape, that helps a lot. Um, his IQ is clearly well above average. Um, I don't know. And he's done complex things in his life, and a lot of them. And that indicates that there's something to him. You know? And he hasn't been successful just in one domain. He's been successful in multiple complex domains, each of which were quite difficult. It's very difficult to be a reality TV star that's successful, mm -hmm. right? It's very difficult to work in the construction business, and especially on large projects. And I know he's had his economic ups and downs, but he stayed in the game for a long time. Very stressful. He's very stress resistant. So he's no, he's no dummy. Uh, and I mean, it's nice to always think that your political opponent is just stupid, but he's done too many complex things for me to assume that he's somehow... If he wasn't smart, he couldn't have done those things. Yeah, I'm glad you're acknowledging that because when I see the people that are in hysteric mode and just saying he's this evil nutbag who doesn't know what he's doing and all this stuff, it just seems like such a lazy way of thinking about it. You don't have to like any of the things. You may not like the way he speaks or any of that, but the idea that somehow this is a dumb person, I think, is discounting of just the way humans have to work. Uh, this is interesting from Super Chat. Do you? Have well, any... he also won the presidency, right, with it, a completely it's... original campaign, and and it's like, and without without spending much money. It's like, okay, is he lucky? Because is that what you're saying? It's just lucky. Right. Well, I don't think it was just luck. It was, it was at least maybe, well, it looked at least to some degree like courage. Maybe it was just blind throwing caution to the wind. You know, I, I don't know if he ever expected that he could possibly win. Yeah, and but, as I'm sure you'd argue, he probably had a little something to do with all those things, that maybe there was some courage, but that he also surrounded himself with people who maybe understood politics more than he did. Well, he could obviously, he can and, also obviously read a crowd. Yeah. Because he was appealing to crowds. And that, that was partly because he did 
he did, I think, try to say what he thought. Now, you could criticize what he thought, and that's fine, but, but he also didn't prepare the same speech. You know, he didn't prepare a speech and then deliver the same one everywhere, which I think is, I really find that rather reprehensible for people to do that. Yeah. Because they're, they're parroting themselves, or someone else writes their speeches, which is something I can't even imagine. I, I, can't, I can't, for what we do, I can't even fathom it, actually. Does, um, it, does it bother you that your audience is predominantly male does that isn't isn't that a bit divisive and so you're you saying rely on. women have some sort of duty to sort of help fix the crisis of masculinity so, so if you want women domination want to dominate is that what you're saying no I... but what gives you the right to say that i mean maybe that's how women want their relationships those women i mean you're making these vast generalizations i'm a clinical psychologist you're saying you've done your research and women are unhappy dominating men you're saying it's there's a bad. crisis of masculinity? I mean, what do you do about it? But you're saying basically it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top. You're saying, well, that's just a fact of no, life. Women aren't necessarily matter. going to get to the top. You're saying I'm it's saying a fact there are of multiple life. reasons for it. I'm saying that 9% pay gap exists. Yeah. Yeah. That's a gap between men and women. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. Now, yeah, if you're you a woman, that seems exists. pretty unfair. You have to say why it exists. Again, a vast generalization. Some it's women not are not more agreeable than yes, men. Yes, that's true. But... That's right, and some women get paid more than men. So you were saying that by and large, women are too agreeable to get the pay rises they I'm, deserve. No, I'm, but you're yes. saying you're saying it's not because of gender; it's because women are too agreeable to ask for pay rises. And you're saying if you it's at the cost can't. of men, that's a problem. But why shouldn't women have the right to choose not to have children, or the right to choose they, those they, demanding careers? They do. But you're saying that makes them unhappy. For you're the saying program. it makes them miserable. I think I take issue with the idea of the typical woman, mm -hmm. because you know all women are different. I mean, people are treated pretty fairly in Western culture already, but we can well, They're really that. not, though, are they? So you're saying women are just more sensible, they don't want... Right, so you're saying that anyone who believes in equality, whether you call them feminists, call them whatever you want to call them, should basically give up because it ain't going to happen. So you're saying give people equality of, of opportunity, that's fine, but still women aren't going to make it, that's what you're really saying. It, because in Scandinavia... What do you mean by that? Equality of outcome is undesirable. Say, I mean, are we going back to the dark That's because you're actually here? not listening. They're I'm listening very carefully, and I'm think. hearing you basically saying women need to just accept they're never going to make it on equal terms, equal outcomes is what, how you defined it. No, I didn't say that. If I was that. a young woman that equal... watching that, I would go, well, I might as well just go and play with my Cindy dolls and give up trying that. at school because I'm not going to get the top job I want because there's someone e sitting there saying it's not possible, I it's said not that desirable, equal it's going to make you miserable. Aren't desirable. That's what I said. Fine, you're saying no, that's no. fine. No, no, I think I really the think The patriarchal that's, system really is just fine. I that's silly. I do. I think that's silly. Successful women, though, mm -hmm. basically have to wear the trousers, in your view. They have to sort of become men to succeed, is what you're saying. Is it not desirable to have some of those female traits you're talking about? I'd say that's a generalisation, but you've used mm -hmm. the words female traits. Is it not desirable to have some of them at the top of business? I mean, maybe there wouldn't have they been They don't a, predict a, a success. Banking. And so, so does high that, negative emotion. You're saying that women aren't intelligent enough to run these top companies? No. You got in trouble for refusing to call trans men and women by their preferred personal pronouns. No, I want to that's ask, not actually true. You cited freedom of speech in that. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? Because... In order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. So you haven't sat there and... I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Ha, gotcha. You have got me. You have got me. I'm trying to work that time. through in my head. Yeah, yeah. It took a while. It took a while. It did, it did, yeah. It took a while. A trans person in your class has come to your class and said they want to be called mm, That's she. never happened. And I would call them she. You're or, saying someone who's trying to work out their gender identity, who may well have struggled with that, had quite a no tough time over the years. With it, yeah. You're comparing them with, you know, Chairman Mao, who no, just the saw activists. the deaths of millions of people. Well, just the even activists. if the activists... You know, they're trans people too. They have a right to say these things. Yeah, but they don't Isn't have a right to speak for their whole community. To compare them to Chairman Mao or, you know, I could, Pinochet, Augusto Pinochet. I mean, that, you know, this is grossly insensitive. No, I didn't compare them to Pinochet. Under Mao, millions of people died. Right. I mean, there's no comparison between That's... Mao and a trans activist, is there? Why not? Because trans activists aren't killing millions of people. The philosophy that's guiding their utterances is the same philosophy. The consequences are... Not yet. 
You're saying that trans activists no. could lead to the deaths of millions of people. What no, I'm saying that the philosophy that drives their utterances is the same philosophy that already has driven us to the deaths of millions of people. Okay, tell us how that philosophy is in any way comparable. Sure, that's no problem. The first thing is, is that the philosophy presumes that group identity is paramount. That's the fundamental philosophy that drove the Soviet Union and Maoist China. And it's the fundamental philosophy of the left-wing activists. It's identity politics. It doesn't matter who you are as an individual. It matters who you are in terms of your group identity. You're just That's saying murderous. these things, though, to provoke, aren't you? I mean, Not you a are bit. a provocateur. I never say You're like anything. the alt-right that you hate to be compared to. Everyone I hate is a literal Nazi, literal Nazi, literal Nazi. Aren't you just whipping people up into a state of anger? And Not at all. You're, so you're saying, like the lobsters, we're hardwired as men and women to do certain things, to sort of run along tram lines, and there's nothing we can do about it. Let me just get this straight. You're saying that we should organise our societies along the lines of the lobsters. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. We're talking about whether you can force someone to refer to you or...